All right, guys, so it is the end of the year, and I thought I would go ahead and give you guys a video talking about all of the servants that are going to be coming out to the NA version of the game for 2023. There are a plethora of very hype and very powerful servants coming to the na version this year not limited to powerful buster enablers like koya and skaya to powerful you know just arts aoe servants like muramasa to good raid ups like space ishtar oberon comes out morgan is sure to be a fan favorite there is regardless going to be a lot of very very hype servants coming out this year and we're going to talk about all of them in today's video to make sure that you know exactly who is coming well aside from the fact that lasengo is sure to drop some surprise banners on us like they have been doing over the last year since they took over but you guys know exactly who is guaranteed to be coming out this year but before we begin this video is once again sponsored by Bai. if you don't know what Bai is they are basically like japanese ebay and if you sign up using my link down in the description down below they will give you 2,000 free yen directly into your account that you can use to gain access to say figures that never come over to the west from whether it be fate or say like common rider you got stuff like the dokkan figures there's like a lot of different anime series that we just don't get the exclusive products over here in the West, and Bai is a really good way to go ahead and get that. And also, again, by signing up using my link, you get to knock off a little bit of that price off of whatever you want to purchase. Look at this, a nice Musashi figure. Bam, you cut 2K right off that price, and you're just that much closer to this banging Musashi figure that actually kind of looks kind of sick. I might want to actually get that. Or look at this BB figure. It's only 1,900 yen as the current price because, like... There's also bidding and stuff like that, so keep that in mind, right? You're gonna have to like maybe bid out some people, but still, at the end of the day, I love the service. It lets me gain access to things that I normally wouldn't be able to get over here in the West, uh, specifically not only just the fate characters, right? But also there's a lot of common writer stuff that I really like that just never gets printed over here in the West. So, you know, I just like being able to get it. I think they do a really good service and they have sponsored the channel and been very, very good to me. So I always like to support them in any way that I can as well. So with that being said, Let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Now, I'm gonna try to pay attention specifically to the newer servants that are coming out this year. I'll mention, obviously, all the rate ups that we're getting, but because, you know, a lot of those servants have already been out for a good couple of years, some of them are still like year one servants that are getting rate ups. I'm gonna try to focus on the newer guys because I know that's what everybody cares about, right? Like, nobody cares about Gunglius Bunglius' is like third rate up in a row. They want to know about Shiro Muramasa, who ironically enough is the opener for the year. He's going to be coming out on New Year's and he <laughs> wants there to say everybody's looking forward to this guy. Like, what, do you, what more do you want me to say about Muramasa? He is an insane arts AOE saber. He can farm with the best of them, rocks a 50% battery, stacks like an arts buff on his NP, so every time he fires it, he's getting better and better at looping and he's doing more and more damage. I mean, there's not a lot of bad stuff to say about Muramasa. A lot of people are excited for him and are going to be summoning for him, not just because he's good, but he's also just an insanely hype character. Now, you may also be able to say that like the other servants that come out with him for New Year's maybe might be like not super hype super orion coming back is really cool Ilya will be a lot better once she gets her buff that gives her a 50 percent battery but unless you've got scotty someone like uh, made altar over here is not going to be super great like she can still do some really good damage but you really want to have scotty to make her a bit more consistent because she can struggle just a little bit with like firing subsequent nps if you don't have someone like scotty to really back her up and then uh, Tama Lancer is a little dated. She gets a buff in the future that definitely helps her out a bit, but right now until she gets that, you definitely have better options to go with. Unless you're going to be, you know, fighting male enemies, then uh, Tama Lancer might be a pretty decent option. Semiramis is just like decent. You know, there's not a whole lot to say. Like she's not like super, super broken, but she's not exactly bad. Same thing for Abby. If you like either of their characters, feel free to roll for them, but otherwise, Muramasa or Super Orion is definitely going to be the pickup. Then we have the rerun for Saber Wars 2. This is going to bring back Space Ishtar. If you did not get just a good Buster Farmer or a good Arts Farmer, this is going to be your gal. She is really good as both a Buster Farmer and a Arts Farmer. She can also technically quick farm, but she doesn't do it as well as she does the other two. And if you didn't get anyone like 
you know, the Muramasa or you didn't get, say, Berserker Musashi or you didn't get, I don't know, Summer Kama later on this year or something like that. If you miss out on her for some reason, I mean, and you want to prep and go ahead and get uh, Space Ishtar, she's definitely really, really strong. She's also pretty decent for some challenge quests as well. She's got some nice uh, skills to deal with stuff like that. But more often than not, you're going to break her out as your farmer just because she's rocking that sweet 50% battery. MHX is not bad right actually i'm like a huge proponent of like no she is actually good but are you really going to summon for mhx when you just had like space ishtar muramasa and then also like super orion with also a uh, big ushi coming up right after probably not big ushi's literally like like i don't know how to describe how broken this chick is i feel like nobody gives her the proper love that she deserves but she's like rocking just stackable damage big crits literally is just like what if we took jolter remade her in the year of our lord 2023 and then slapped quick on her instead of buster yeah she's gonna be pretty broken like so while i'm a huge proponent of mhx i really think if you're gonna summon for a single target quick servant you have to go for big ushi big ushi's absolutely insane plus there's the added bonus that ku uh alter is on this banner as well and if you need a good solo servant ku alter is your man but yeah this is like another servant that is like insanely good and you can already see we're still in the first month of the year and we just already have like four pretty nutty servants back to back to back we have muramasa super orion who are on the same banner space ishtar who's like a godly farmer and then you also have uh big ushi over here who just absolutely like crushes challenge quests right she just destroys bosses and i think a lot of people once they're able to actually get their grubby little mitts on big ushi and they can finally see how broken she is oh my goodness i think she's finally gonna get some respect right like i think she's finally gonna get the respect she deserves uh then we actually get romulus's right up uh, romulus is good i just don't know if people are going to opt to go for him over some of these more newer servants as opposed to him getting his rerun but romulus is good has the whole roman niche where he makes your allies roman the enemies roman do big special damage mods you can pair him with boudica and do a lot of funny stuff hey look at that even if you don't have boudica she's on right up i don't know why you wouldn't have boudica but you can snag her and go ahead and grab her with Romulus if that tickles your fancy but what you're probably going to do is you're probably going to end up saving for Karen over here who is a really really strong AoE quick servant uh, if you don't have yourself a quick farmer if you don't have yourself a Dante's or you don't have yourself a Voyager or maybe you do have them but you just want more of a cute alternative to actually farming then you could just go ahead and grab yourself Karen there's not a whole lot to say about Karen except the fact that she's just really really strong uh she's got like the big batteries and everything you know everything that you would ever want from like a farming server she's just really good say comes back again similar issue to like MHX coming out right before big Ushi is that like are you gonna go for say or are you gonna go for like the omni farmer person right because say at least has like the damage mods like she's got like three different damage mods that kind of keep her competitive with karen but it's still like you're probably gonna go for like the new shiny unit that's also able to kind of farm anything because of her extra uh extra class right as opposed to like uh say who can get stopped by like lancers or something like that which is something you really don't want to see so it's like she's definitely good but you're probably going to go for karen instead if you're looking to kind of scratch that aoe quick itch um arthur comes out but I don't think anybody really cares too much about Arthur. Amakusa is really broken. He is really, really good. Um, I have like definitely spread the word of this man and how good he is, but you're not going to summon for Amakusa, right? The problem with Amakusa is that he, ironically enough, as opposed to Karen, is kind of held back, I believe, by his ruler class because the ruler class is generally more defensive. You want it as more of like your tanky guy, like someone like Jean or someone that can really, really take the hits. But Amakusa's got a very aggressive kit and I feel like he's not fully able to take advantage of like the DPS that he should be because he's not able to like fight anybody for like super effective damage, at least not commonly, because how often are you going to run into like a moon cancer and bringing him against a berserker? Well, that kind of loses the one thing that the ruler class has going for him. So he's really good. It's just, I feel like a lot of people see him with like the ruler class and they kind of think that he's being held back. So Voyager also comes back, as I kind of just mentioned earlier with Karen. Uh, but if you want like a more cute alternative, you go with the Karen. If you don't really care too much about Karen, but you still want yourself an AoE quick servant, Voyager is your man. 
he gets a buff that is actually like really really strong and it kind of fixes his damage issue so if you've been like using voyager and you feel like he's underpowered in comparison to dante's the buff he gets actually does help him out quite a bit do not summon on the class based summoning campaigns I, i'm not even going to break it down do not do that do not be a dumb dumb dummy do not do that if you want to summon on somebody one of these two banners either of these banners are really really strong galatea is kind of like vlad but not exactly right like i would say that vlad is capable of like doing more damage i suppose but galate is definitely more of like a sustainable servant uh she's really really strong with the ability to like negate damage with like her um i would say more unique style of protecting herself with the 100 defense the battery makes her really strong the guts helps her survive as well she's got like a unique ability to like cleanse debuffs at the end of every turn which is really kind of cool so that's really neat. Nero Bride also comes back around if for whatever reason you didn't get your grubby little mitts on Castoria, but that really shouldn't be a problem either. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but then if you also want to just kind of bolster up your art support, you can get Tamamo, but I would just wait for the free SSR. And if you really want Tamamo, you can snag her there. But I don't know, maybe you want to pick up Mordred with your free SSR. Maybe you never got Waver and now here's a good opportunity to go ahead and get Tamamo. So that's you know, nice, but again, probably not going for like the older servants. You're probably going to summon for the new shiny units, right? The, uh, the strengthening quest little thing, whatever, right? I mean, <laughs> if you didn't like Galatea, you can get Vlad, I suppose. Then we move into Grail Live. I'm just going to let you guys know right now, this is kind of like one of those things. If it's anything like the JP version of the game, we might have a bit of a dead period because this just took forever for them to actually like initiate, or at least it felt like we were sitting in like two dead weeks for some reason. I don't know i just remember it being like a really kind of not interesting part of the game so once the grail live starts it's kind of cool but you know before waiting for it is a little annoying we get like 90 different costumes for so many servants so that's really cool and we get miss crane i don't know if anybody really cares about this banner unless you specifically want like shuten helena or jean's outfits and they're all pretty good admittedly but I don't know if you're gonna summon specifically for them just for their costumes. Although I have gone on record saying that I wanted to summon for Kentucky because I thought his costume for 5.5 uh, was so cool. So, you know, maybe maybe you're like, hey, Jean's costume, kind of cute. I'm gonna go ahead and try to snag her up. But you'd be missing out on the chance to either get MHX Alter, who is like one of the best single target quick servants in the game. Although if you snagged Tyra early on, you can afford to miss this servant miss crane also comes out and miss crane is like one of those like big brain characters that you kind of need to like actually lab out and figure out how to use she is really really good but she takes a lot of getting used to right with like her ability to like shuffle herself back into the party the like ability to insta fire nps she's definitely really good but it's I'm just telling you now, it's going to take a little bit of a, like a learning curve, right? Again, it's not super hard. Like once you get the hang of it and like, once you kind of like learn how to actually like shift your guys around properly, because she's basically just the, um, the plug suit on legs, right? Like as a servant, right? Cause she shuffles herself out. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you're able to kind of adapt to that and you really get a game plan going, her true power definitely comes out. And I think she's one of those servants that's worth going for if you're willing to put in the time to actually kind of like learn how the servant works. Uh, then we're gonna have this grail front over here. I mean, I really don't think I need to tell you guys to like not summon on these banners. I mean, unless you're like a huge like Lancer Artoria fan or you're like, I gotta have Mordred cause I have the Apocrypha outfit or something like that. Unless you're like, I gotta get Mordred. Unless like you're Mordred's biggest fan, then you know, by all means pop off, go summon on the banner. But then you're also missing out on the rerun for the summer camp, which does bring Kiara if you don't have yourself a good arts farmer. Maybe you missed out on Muramasa. She's definitely a very, very solid option. If you've whiffed on a lot of the other quick farmers as well, uh, Ilya has the trifecta of farming. She's got a battery, an NP gain buff, and a card buff. So she's also really good. Brynhildr is okay. Uh, Emmy is really, really broken after his buff. I mean, Summer Abigail's okay. Like, yeah, she's she's i she's got a 50 percent battery on a buster aoe servant so she's like kind of compatible with koya and skaya if you want to do that i don't know why you would but she can do it uh tomoe can loop if you're really desperate for an arts aoe servant like if you missed out on kiara on the first banner you know she can do some loopity looping but i don't know why you do that when da vinci lily's coming out like if you whiff this banner 
As much as I love Tomoe, and as cute as I think she is, if you need a looper, you just go for Da Vinci. But the problem is, I'm gonna advise people around like Miss Crane, decide if you're gonna summon on any of these banners, right? Like you need to really decide on this because the next couple of banners is just a murderer's row of just insane servants, right? You've got Morgan coming out with Bargus, Balabon Sith, Ku goes back on raid up. So if you've never gotten Ku caster to NP5, he's going on raid up. All of these guys are good. Like Ku gets a buff that makes him nutty. Balabon Sith is a pretty decent, quick single target archer. Bargus can do some really ridiculous stuff as a um a Buster Saber. But Morgan, I mean, I still can't believe to this day that there are people in the comments being like, you're gassing her up too much. Cause I'm like, no, Morgan is insane, right? She's rocking like 50% battery. She's like baby Castoria because she can give everybody NP gain. Her third skill I found to just be like really nutty because like just the immediate stars, star weight, and then guts plus like crit damage. Like that is just like a devastating combo. The fact that she can like lower everybody's defense while also raising her own attack is insane. And then she's got like three different special damage mods on her NP. Like Morgan is nuts, right? Like if if you're gonna summon for Morgan, I don't like I know I did the whole video talking about like which is the best banner to summon on, just get her, right? Like I'm not saying that just as a Morgan simp, you just need to get the girl, right? Because then after this, we got like insane banners that are coming out. Like if you want to try to snag her down here after Oberon comes out, that's fine because you have Castoria coming back if you didn't get her. You have a little bit of a reprieve with like the Nero Fest return over here. Like they give you a little bit of a break because if you don't know, uh, Lost Belt 6 is broken up into three different parts. It'll be a very, very long and arduous journey. It's full of pretty intense fights that you have to go through. So they split it up. They even threw us a lotto in the middle to be like, hey, start leveling up your guys. Like if you're struggling, here's some more guys. Then after that, though, we get back into Lost Belt 6. Melusine comes out. Melusine is insane, right? Because like I've always talked about how like the meta for FGO has kind of gone from like, okay, get one person that can just do big bungus damage and they can just like obliterate the boss in one hit. Then we get break bars. Like, okay, I need a guy that can like fire an NP and then recover, fire another NP, take out the boss. Then we're getting the people that are like, I need you to be good and consistent for like three turns. So you can just go like, bam, 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 take the boss out if they've got like two break bars. Melusine is just like, what if I NP'd like seven times in a row, if not more? Like Melusine will just keep bonking the enemy with her NP until they die. She is also a buster farmer if you need that as well. She's literally a two in one package. She stacks NP gain as a single target art servant, which is dummy insane. And then she's got a 100% battery that transitions her into a buster farming servant, right? She's just insane. Like Melusine is nuts. And then even if you get Percival, Percival's just like standard dot JPEG good servant, right? Like there's not a lot of stuff that I would say that he's doing that's like super dummy insane or anything or like he's insanely broken, but he's just really good. Like he does everything you would just want a standard servant to do, like from battery, card buff, protection, all that good stuff, right? Just a really, really good guy. Sherlock ain't nobody summoning on Sherlock when the next banner is Koyanskaya, followed by Oberon, followed by Morgan immediately coming back around after just being gone for a month. I don't think I really need to like explain to people why these servants are insane, but I'll give you a quick rundown if you've been living under a rock. Koyanskaya allows you to buster farm, which should not even be possible, right? It is buster servants coming in yet again and stealing the job of everybody else. So like you guys are looping? Nah, not anymore. We're looping and we don't even care about refunding our NP. We just care about doing enough damage, not doing enough damage with Koyanskaya giving you special damage mods, being able to um, have the same skill cooldown that uh, Tamamo Caster has, except on a skill. And then the buster buffs and the stars that she drops. Well, you got Oberon. I just did a video on Oberon talking about everything that he does. You could check that out. I'll obviously throw out another video whenever, you know, he comes out in like a year or something. Well, not a year, but like in six months, probably. The guy is nutty, right? The fact that he can give you like 70% NP, uh, NP damage buff that's also pairs very nicely with like other supports, right? Because not a lot of the other supports are giving you NP damage, but then he also buffs your ability of like how strong your NP damage buffs are. That does apply to things like um, 
not, uh, not, not kaleidoscope, black grail, just lost my momentum, but it applies to stuff like black grail. They give you like those passive buffs on your CEs. It makes him dummy nutty. And yeah, sure, he does give you that buster buff on the third skill, but you could just slap him at the end of like any of your arts teams or anything. It's literally like just add Oberon into the mix and you're going to like guarantee clear whatever you're doing. Just make sure you use his third skill absolutely last because it turns your servant into basically a useless person. Right? Like they're not able to do anything after that. Morgan comes back around, still as broken as ever. Ilya comes back around. She should get her like buff around this time. She gets a 50% battery. She just becomes stupid dummy broken. I don't know why they thought Ilya needed a 50% battery. Like I would have been fine with 30%, but they were like, no, she's got to like compete with Sanzo a little bit. So dummy broken. Uh, Drake does come out interestingly after these two having a rate up. If you don't have Drake, she's kind of interesting because she can be a buster farmer because of her 50% battery. But I'm not going to recommend that you go for her specifically because summer six, I don't know why this flew under the radar. Like all of these servants are good. Okita Saber is just a nutty, quick looping servant. She's like actually insane. These two are really good DPS servants. They're both really, really strong for arts. Then you have like a really, really strong arts farmer. If you missed out on um, Space Ishtar, Muramasa, uh, someone like Berserker Musashi, just all those other people. If you missed out on them, she's really good. This is literally just like Archer say, but what if she was a Zerk? So she's obviously really, really strong. Canis, unironically, might just be the weakest person out of like the batch that comes out, not including the old people. And she's even like pretty decent. Like she's not even that bad, right? And then Doman comes out as well, but like you're probably gonna go for someone over here unless you're just a huge Doman simp and you don't like Okita in a swimsuit. And now why would you not like that? Um, I'm not sure if we're actually gonna go ahead and get this one. I'm not sure what they're gonna do with a lot of the Melty Blood stuff. They might just replace this with something else like they did uh, last year for Christmas. Like last winter, they were like, oh, the Babylonia thing that was supposed to come out is now like an Arthur and Ozymandias campaign. So I don't know, expect a random Artoria rate up somewhere during the year, right? Um, this is basically taking all of the Liz uh, Halloween events, compacting them into one big event, and it allows you to get all of the Liz free to plays that you might have missed, while also giving all of them a buff that doesn't fix all of them, but it does make them a lot better, right? Like it actually, I would say makes them borderline usable, like border, well, that might be giving them a little bit too much credit, but it definitely helps them out a lot. And really what you're gonna do is you're probably not gonna summon on any of these banners over here, right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab all of those guys. And then when this one comes out, you're gonna be able to get all of the other NP copies that you need for uh, the other Lizzo. So like when this comes out and you're only able to get like uh, one copy of each of the free to plays and you're like, why can't I max them out? You'll be able to buy them in the shop on the Halloween Rising over here. So don't worry about that. Speaking of Halloween Rising, uh, broken Zenobia. I actually thought she was a little underpowered on release. But no, using her at NP1 has been absolutely fine. And now that I've got her NP2, I'm really excited to see how well she does. The fact that like she doesn't just have like a raw battery, but the fact that she just gives herself like a bunch of battery at the end of every turn just happens to be enough. And she's able to get the job done. And even if your NP1 Zenobia isn't able to like clear the enemy on the last wave, usually she clears the goons and might like leave the servant alive. But that's why you pop her skill that drops all the stars and she just beats him up with big crits. Also, Ereshkigal right up. Uh, this is why I believe she gets her buff and she becomes stupid dummy broken because of that anti-earth mod. So she becomes really good, uh, especially if you went ahead and grabbed yourself Koyans Gaia and especially Oberon. Um, I don't think anybody's going to summon on this banner. Ibuki comes back around at this point. If you missed her on any of the GSSRs or you missed her on her initial release, this is your chance to go ahead and try to get her or Kentoki. Not a bad banner. Um, Ibuki's definitely a very, very strong servant. Just when it comes to challenge quests or buster farming, she does have a 50% battery. That's kind of your key, uh, by the way, for buster farming, like buster AoEs. You want to look for people that have like 50% batteries. Those are kind of like the prime people that Koyanskaya wants to work with. If they've got like a 30% battery and you max their repen skill, you can still kind of get it done with like Koyanskaya usually being able to clear like a wave one or something. But that might require you to have like a scope or something along those lines. You might have to get a little bit more creative if it's like a 30% battery, but that's why also I wouldn't, you know, uh, sleep on Ibuki over here. And then obviously Kentoki is really good for just like random bunguses that you find on like random nodes, right? He's just really good. 50% battery does big damage. 
knocks them out of the park, right? Still a very, very good servant, at least for those niche situations. Uh, Izumo just kind of flew under the radar. She's really insane as like a quick DPS servant. Maybe she flew under the radar because not only did we get big Ushi this year, but we also had MHX Alter come back. And I think they're both better than what she's able to do just because Ushi is an Avenger, so you can theoretically bring her to like anybody. And Avenger, like uh, the damage mod that is inherent to the class, because uh, if you guys didn't know, different classes have like different damage modifiers. The Avenger one is insane. It's why Avenger Eris hits really, really hard. And then you also have like MHX Alter, who's a bit different. She's a Berserker, so she's just super effective against everybody. So like they're technically a bit better, but if you're looking for someone, don't count her out. Like don't count out Izumo. She is really, really good. If you're like, man, I want like this small Tamamo looking character. I'm going to go ahead and summon for this. She's definitely not bad. Ryoma, I found to be a little underwhelming uh but that's only if you try to like force him to farm his farming ability can be a little dodgy at some times at np1 uh, having used him for like the last i don't know like what how long did i have him for like six months or something like well probably actually longer than that but you know what i'm saying like having used him personally you know i can i'm just like eh, he's he's uh he could struggle a little bit still like a cool character he's not bad but probably gonna be one of those ones that you skip unless you really like ryoma um this is really huge because this is when Scotty gets her rerun back. And then Scotty gets this rerun. And we know this now as global people. But Ty Gong comes out right after this. And Ty Gong is disgusting. He does way too much. He does way too many things. I don't know if people were just undervaluing him when he came out. But he just, he does too much, right? Like, the more and more that, like, I would use him on stream, I'm like, dog, I don't even have the QP to, like, 10, 10, 10 this guy. He's stuck at 1, 1, 1, and he's just out here clapping cheeks. I mean, like, the fact that I was almost able to get this dude to farm at 1, 1, 1 is insane, right? Like, this guy is dumb. He's really, really good, especially right after Scotty comes out. They're like, here's Scotty. Oh, other metas want to talk a bunch of crap? Here's Tygong. Tygong, don't sleep on this guy. If... You're not a fan of him in the event or anything like that. If you're like, oh, I'm actually, I'm not really feeling this guy. It's okay. You don't have to summon for him. But if you do summon for him, he's going to treat you right. This guy is dummy nutty broken. But that's the main stuff that we know is coming out for 2023 on the NA version of the game. Do not be surprised if they throw curveballs our way. Because Lesengel has already been doing that. Generally, they seem to like to have like at least two banners up at once, if not much more. So I wouldn't be surprised. If they throw in like a bonus, like re-rate, well, I was going to say a re-rate up of Koyanskaya, but don't worry, Koyanskaya gets a re-rate up like right after this when um, the other Koyanskaya comes out. They both come back out together. And so I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if they threw in another one of those. And I was like, well, technically they do. It's literally right after this for New Year's, but you get what I'm saying. I wouldn't be surprised if they like throw some other broken servants around or they sprinkle them around the year try to entice you to not summon for some of the new guys because some of the new guys and some of the servants that make their returns like scotty are just insane but again let me know in the comments down below who you are looking forward to the most this year i'm actually curious to see like what are your top three servants that you're wanting to get if they're all reruns i want to know the three newest servants that you're looking forward to right maybe you know i'll see a lot of people being like izumo super popular i want to see them maybe it's tai gong that would be sick I think a lot of people are going to be like Morgan, Koyinskaya, Oberon. Like I'm expecting that to be most people's top threes, but you know what? Maybe you're a little bit different. Maybe you, yes, you, the viewer, you like Izumo or let me find someone else. You, you want <laughs> Jacques de Molay, right? You want her. All right. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe that's who you're looking forward to, right? Let me know all that in the comments down below. And um, yeah, I will go ahead and I will catch you guys in the next video. Uh, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, all the good stuff, peep stuff in the description. I'm trying to end the video now, so yeah, I'm not gonna go over it. You could, you can read, okay? You're a, you're an FGO player. You do enough reading, you can read a little bit longer. But with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace, late guys.